How's everyone doing? How was your break? Good. Don't all answer at once. Imagine someone just said, oh, it was terrible. I wouldn't know what to do, but it's good. Good to be back in the house of God after a couple of weeks break and um, allowing the staff and team and who do an incredible job just serving in this house, have a bit of a, a, bit of a break. And can we just give it up for every person who serves? <laughs> team leaders, staff, I mean, all of them are absolutely incredible. Is everyone enjoying their reading plans? Yeah, cool, cool. If you're not part of the reading plan, you can jump on the website and get on one of those. It's been incredible, it's been incredible. So 2024, uh, we are here and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's probably uh, a little bit cliche to be preaching a, a classic beginning of the year message. But just like my wife shared during ministry time, um, we believe that the Word of God is the thing to build your life on, the foundation of your life. And um, I want to teach you this morning, really, I felt to go pretty practical. And the 8.30 responded well. So, I mean, it's no competition, <laughs> but um, how to access... The presence of the Lord. Now, I know that God is everywhere, but also the Bible speaks of moments where He manifests His presence in a special way for certain people and certain groups. And so there are protocols in Scripture that teach us how to come into the presence of the Lord. And, um, and so just before we um, Start, finish, start, finish, keep going is probably the word I'm looking for. If you've got a seat next to you, would you just wave your hand? There's some awesome people standing at the back. Can we squash up and let, I don't know, I just see figures at the back. Unless you guys are angels, you, you, you probably, you might be. But I want to give these guys a seat. So just, if you could just give them a seat, that would be great. Praise the Lord. It's a good problem to have. But the presence of the Lord is uh, something that uh, is is. Everywhere He's in us, He's with us, He's upon us. But there are these special moments um, where the Lord manifests His presence in a special way uh, to certain people. And there are protocols or ways or instructions in Scripture of how we get there, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, the, the New Testament, oh, sorry, the Old Testament speaks about, you know, um, you enter His gates with thanksgiving. Um, and he's caught with praise. And so there's protocol about how we get into the presence of the Lord. But I wanna read you a scripture this morning that will hopefully set you up um, for 2024, both corporately and privately. So what I'm gonna do is kind of switch between these principles, what it means corporately for us as a church, but then also how do I uh, apply these things in my life, in my day to day? Because I believe that in 2024, what you need is not um, you, you know, recipe for success. You, you actually need to know how to live in the presence and the glory of the King. That's all you, that's all you need. You like, like, you're going to run into trouble. You're going to have highs and lows and you're going, to have, you're going to have things that bless you and things that don't. But if you live in a constant state of being in His presence, I think everything's going to be okay. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all this other stuff that everybody else is worrying about right now, trying to set up their year to be perfect. It'll all be added unto you. And so what I want to do is give you some real practical keys this morning uh, with some demonstrations of how to enter into the presence of the Lord. So we're going to be reading from Ephesians 5, verse 1 to 21. The first half sounds heavy for the first uh, service of 2024, but, um, but we're going to go there because it sets us up for the, for the end. And so it says, Paul, he's writing here to the, Ephes the, the Ephesian church, the, the, the church at Ephesus. And basically, if you read the book of Ephesians, it's quite incredible. What it will do is it, it's so theologically deep, but also so practical about how to live our Christian lives. I've been reading it over and over again. And the first half of Ephesians is really about who we are in Christ. So if you struggle with your identity as a believer, as a son or a, or a daughter, you gotta read the first half of the book of Ephesians. Man, it's packed, jam-packed with some incredible truth about who you are in Christ because of what He's done. And then the second half is really about how do we practically live out this Christian life and some incredible instruction. And so we pick it up in Ephesians chapter five, which is classically got some stuff in there about marriage and different things. Um, and then Ephesians six moves into spiritual warfare. So Ephesians five verse one to 21 says this, Paul Paul writing to the church in Ephesus, therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. 
And then he goes some pretty heavy stuff. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking, coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this, is, for this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, and, uh, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and Christ. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Uh, But all things are exposed and made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. It's pretty heavy. Thank you for the encouraging scripture at the start of 2024. But all of context with what he's about to say. If we wanna access the presence of God, if we wanna be revivalists, if we wanna be people who, who really genuinely walk in relationship with this Jesus, we actually can't separate our character and the way that we walk from our access and proximity to the King. It all goes hand in hand. And so he sets us up with like some pretty heavy stuff. And then he says this, do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation. So he's giving the analogy or the, or the picture of somebody that's drunk with wine. And it says, which is dissipation. The word dissipation there simply means that it's a waste of time and it's, it's the only thing with God that's unredeemable. <laughs> God actually can't take the time, the energy and the effort that you waste getting on the booze and losing, literally losing. The, the dissipation word there means it's unredeemable. God can do nothing with it. He says, don't be drunk with wine, which is dissipation or a waste of time, but be filled, or some versions say drunk with the Holy Spirit. So he's giving this this analogy of, hey, you used to get drunk on wine, now get drunk on the Holy Spirit. Be filled, live a lifestyle of being filled and filled and filled and filled and filled with the Holy Spirit. The word there, filled, is not a once-off, you know, happened in 87 at some youth camp. It's like literally a daily walk where I'm constantly being filled with the Holy Ghost and overflowing into the world around me. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's great. I think everybody in here would agree that that's the kind of life lifestyle we want to live. That's what I want in 2024. Above everything else, I want to be filled with His presence. I want to know Him. I want to hear Him. I want to access the presence of God. I want the secrets to His presence. I want to be closer with Him than I ever was. I think we would all agree with that. But the question is how? He actually goes on to explain it. This is key. One of these scriptures that we just kind of gloss over, but I really felt from the Lord to set us up as a church with these practical steps of how to live a life that where we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? It says, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things, to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. I mean, living in the presence of the Lord is the absolute only thing that you need to do with your life. It's the most important thing you need to do with your life. Jesus said, you're doing all these things, but you're missing one thing, and that is to be with me. Live a lifestyle where you're at my feet, where you're with me. And above everything else, we've been praying over the last 10 years, and we do have this, is a worshipping church. A worshipping church. I'm not talking about just for the sake of worship. I'm talking about people who dearly love the presence of the Lord. I'm not talking about people who love church, although you should love church. We heard this morning, it's His bride. But people who love the presence of the Lord, both corporately, because there's something about coming together. Hey, we come together and we worship the Lord. I mean, we've only been, what, two or three weeks off. 
And it's like, oh, I just miss coming together with all of you and singing and praising the Lord together. There's an element of His presence that I cannot, um, I cannot uh, receive, I cannot experience unless I'm in that corporate setting. That's biblical. But then there's also the secret place, the time that I have alone with Him. That, that's super important. And we need to build on that and be people who are filled constantly to overflowing. And so let's just break it down. It says here, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Excuse me. And I always got confused when I read this scripture. When I first got saved, and even right up until preaching this, script, this message this, uh, this week, I actually never understood it. The reason being is because when you read it, it says to you in almost every translation, it says to you singing to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So I always thought, maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I'm meant to go and meet you at the door when you come to church and say, hi, how are you? And then break out into song. (laughs) I'm not doing it. (laughs) Psalms, hymns, and spiritual, speaking to one another. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm down for it. If this is what we need to do, like, hey, how was your New Year's? Pretty good. What about mine? La, and then... Is that like, that's how we get close? So I looked into it. And you know, the King James Version, remember the thou art the version? That's the only version that has this translated correctly. And it's actually speaking to yourself. It's nothing got to do with one another. He's actually calling us to live a lifestyle where we speak to ourselves. What did David say? Encourage yourself in the Lord. There's something about, if we could close that door, that'd be great. If we, something about being a person who knows how to encourage themselves and speak to themselves in the Lord, we will access a measure of His presence that we, we never have before. Let's, let's break it down. The word is here to, which means himself, herself, itself. Speaking to yourself. You ever see those people like you're driving along the road and they're, and they're like mumbling to themselves in the car or you're walking through the park and they're like talking to themselves? One of two things really, if, if I'm honest with you, this is what I think, either multiple personality disorder or they're a Christian. Yeah. One or the other. <laughs> either they're going mad or they're very spiritual people. <laughs> or both. But actually, this this thing where we we actually are commanded here to speak to ourselves in these three things, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Do you remember in in Joshua 1 and Psalms 1 and many other places, but they're the two main ones where God instructs Joshua in Joshua and then David speaks about it in the Psalms where it says, meditate on the Lord day and night. That's not like new age meditation. That's not like where we just sit in silence and, you know, there's a whole movement right now about silence and just, you know, be a monk. (laughs) Just don't say anything, don't breathe, don't move, don't talk to anyone. It's not that. What the word meditate in the Scriptures actually is from the word ruminants. Now, for any of you that are dairy farmers, you will know, or any kind of cow farming, is is that even a thing, cow farming? If you've got cows is what I'm saying. You'll know that they have multiple stomachs. And the word there, I'm going somewhere with this, the word there for meditate is the same word used for the process that a cow goes through when they eat and regurgitate food. So I'm not gonna ruin your lunch, but here it goes. A cow will eat grass. It'll go into their first stomach. They'll literally vomit it up, regurgitate it, chew on it again, put it into their second stomach, Throw it up. I was told in the first services there's four stomachs. Third and then fourth, right? This is the same word as meditate. This is the picture that God is using for us to meditate on the Word of God day and night. So what are we meant to do? I don't care. You don't actually have to read 40 Scriptures. My friend Glenn over there, when he sinks a birdie putt in golf, which is not very often, (laughs) he... He says, oh, I read 10 chapters this morning. That's why I sunk the birdie. <laughs> and, and, so, and so what happens is, what happens is it's not about the amount that you read. 
but it's about meditating on the Word. So you could take one verse, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And your job is to meditate it day and night. And it says, in all things you'll prosper. So what do I do? It actually also means to mutter it under your breath, like a cow, literally like a cow. So, you, so you're meant to bring it up and you just, you go on about your day and you're saying, under your breath, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And then lunchtime, maybe it's your second stomach, bring it up again. You're, you're, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Before you go to bed, Lord, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You do it until information becomes revelation and the Word of God becomes alive and birthed in you and it can produce fruit. And so what he's saying here is it's the same as meditating. It's speaking to yourself. What do we do it with? These three things. One, Psalms, literally singing the Psalms. The Psalms are songs. These are songs written to be sung. And so we're, I think there's a filter in heaven that takes all of our bad voices and makes them sound like Rue, and then God hears it. Yeah, amen. So it's not about singing good. It's, 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 it's about singing. There's something about meditating on the Word, speaking to yourself, singing to yourself the Psalms. They're there for us to do that. It's a key to unlock the presence of God in your life. The second thing that he tells us to do it with is hymns. Now, I know you and I say hymns are like all the old school Benny Hinn classics, right? We're like, oh, they're the hymns. But it's not really it. Hymns is only used twice in Scripture, once here and another time in Colossians. And what it means is literally uh, songs of praise and thanksgiving. That's what it means. So any song of praise and thanksgiving. Now the difference between praise and thanksgiving and worship, worship is when we worship Him for what, sorry, for who He is. Right? That's His character and His nature. Praise and thanksgiving is when we praise Him for what He's done. The good and mighty works. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for my family. It's, it's, this, it's this thanksgiving and praise that comes out of the lips of the believers. And so there's this, there's this ability to speak to ourselves boss ourselves. When we're feeling down, we've actually got to talk to ourselves and say, no, 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 bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. I will not be down today. I will not be a frump today because I was made to worship Jesus. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Father, that you saved me. Thank you, Father, that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. And so we go through and we start to encourage ourselves. You know, it's not my job to encourage you. It's your job to encourage you. It's not your wife's job, your husband's job. No one else's job, but we've got, to, we've got to learn the art and the skill of encouraging ourselves in the Lord. I'm telling you, this is a game changer. How are you, brother? Oh, not good. Everything's always a drag. What's happening? I know that person doesn't speak to themselves like this. Like, you might be mistaken in public for a little bit of a... But, you know... <laughs> Speak to yourself. And then the last one, Rue, if you can come up, um, spiritual songs. I'm gonna use Rue and we're gonna, we're gonna demonstrate. Spiritual songs. This is the word ode, which actually means spontaneous, impromptu songs of praise. And the Lord has been showing me that this is the, 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 the order in which we access realms of His presence we never have. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Why is the pastor talking about singing for the first message of 2024? I'm telling you, if we can get this, there's something about atmospheres changing. There's something about the angels coming and joining with you and, and doing things in your life that pr previously wouldn't happen because of worship, because of singing. There's something about it. There's something in, in the supernatural this is why we fought during COVID to stay open. Do you wanna know why? <laughs> because there's something that you access in the corporate setting. People say, oh, you know, but you just gotta be a Christian and you don't need church to be a Christian. An element of that is true, but you don't access the corporate presence of the Lord unless you're with believers in the same room. But see, when you don't understand the presence of the Lord, it's just, ah, it's just the Sunday gathering. But when you understand that corporate worship shifts something, Think about this, Solomon's temple. 
they all sung together and the presence of God came and wrecked them so much so that they couldn't stand. Acts chapter two, one place, one accord. Book of Ezra, one place, one accord, all singing together. And so spiritual songs, just going back there, what, what that means is an impromptu song of praise. And so I start by maybe singing a psalm. Uh, bless the Lord, I'm my soul. We know that song? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. You see, everything shifted as soon as we did. Let's go again. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless His holy name. And then you get into the presence of the Lord and you start to be thankful. You start to remember the things that He saved you from. You start to remember that He pulled you out of the addiction, out of the anxiety, out of the fear, out of the religious spirit. Whatever He saved you from, you start to begin to thank Him in the presence of the Lord. And then out of your heart comes a new song, an impromptu song. That's what spiritual songs are. And we come into that place and we move into a spiritual song. This is now thanks to the Lord. It's your own words. It's not Hillsong, Bethel or Elevation. It's you. It's like you move into this place where it overflows out of your heart and to the Lord and it blesses Him. And it is a key, friends. It's a key to accessing God in a way that you can't... Would you not do this? Can we get the, the track on, please, Kylie? I've asked Kylie to just play a track that helps me when I, I just, it's not the only way to access the presence of God. Um, I'll post it on my social media so, so that you guys can, can grab it this week. But it's just a track that for me instantly, I come into the presence of the Lord. Yeah, it's just, it's been like this for years. And when we're told and we're taught to on earth as it is in heaven, that means what's worship like in heaven? What's going on in heaven? You, you, know, you know there's no preaching in heaven, right? Thank God, I want some time off. No, you, you know there's no preaching in heaven. There's nothing wrong with preaching. We need the Word of God. There's a place for it. We're instructed to do it. But in heaven, it's just worship. The Word of God He's sitting on the throne. The Word of God is on the throne. The sermon, His name is Jesus. He's the Lamb of God and He sits on the throne. And so we see, we get glimpses into heaven through the book of Revelation and different places, book of Isaiah, where we see what God is, what's going on in heaven and worship and what kind of songs are they playing? What kind of songs are they singing? What are the angels and these creatures that give incredible description in Scripture? What are they singing? They're singing things very simply like holy, holy, holy. They sing worthy, worthy, worthy. And can I just encourage you, you don't need to have the best words. I tell you what, we, we just moved house and we've got this beautiful reserve that's near our house in Ohawiti. I just get my headphones on and walk and just holy, holy, holy. I've got this track, literally this track in my headphones and I'm just holy, Holy, I've got nothing to say, Lord. Got, I'm, I'm empty. I'm empty. You don't need to have eloquent words. Holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Jesus. Worthy are you. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Holy. Holy. Holy, Jesus. No one like you, Lord. No one like you, you're so holy. Holy, holy. Just begin to sing holy, Ruth. when we sing what heaven's singing. Holy. If you're stuck, you're feeling down at home, just, just sing holy, just sing holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy. Just even right now,
right now, begin to connect with the Lord. He's holy. holy. Hundreds of times in Scripture it says that He's holy. It says that He's loved two or three times. He's holy. Holy are you, Lord. Holy. to be Ruru. Ru's very anointed for this in the corporate setting. Corporate setting, he's anointed for this, but in your private time, you can just go for it. of God in this kind of realm and that's pride Psalm 31 verse 20 it talks about this it says how God hides his presence from those that are proud and I've been there I've been in corporate situations where the the worship leader would say something like come on let's all sing and I'm like you ain't telling me to sing that's pride and give me 20 people in a room who are singing who are in one accord over a thousand people with some standing, some sitting, some singing, some on their phone. 20 people who are actually singing. Why am I going on about singing? I believe this is a key for us this year. I believe it's a key. I believe it's a key corporately. I believe it's a key in your family. I believe it's a key in your business. You're gonna see things turn around as you walk around and you sing. 
You sing worship, you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I believe the presence of God will break open over your home, over your marriage, over your kids. It's the only thing, it's pride. But He gives more grace. Therefore, James verse four, uh, 4 verse 6, He resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. I love this. You know what it means to resist? The actual word there is is to actively resist like a fighter. Like someone who's actively, like God. So just come in, you know, there's no no requirements for the presence of God. Mm, Yes and no. If you've got pride, God will resist you. This is hard for men. Can I just say this? Ladies are just in touch with this stuff. It's like, bang, they're singing, they're worshiping, they're, they're in touch with this place. Men that are creatives are very easy to jump in, into this, this realm of His presence. But for men that are hard, men that have had things done to them, maybe men that are a little bit staunch, as we like to say here in NZ, I tell you what, that, that attitude, you are missing out on the presence of the Lord that the Lord wants to give you. There's an experience in Him that you're craving for, that you've been made for, that without surrendering and just coming into that place of singing worship and giving thanks, you can't actually enter. And so my my encouragement is that we would do 2024 in His presence. Accessing realms of the glory of God that maybe we haven't before. Corporately, but I pray that this is like the practice ground for you to go home. Buy yourself a Bluetooth speaker, put a track on, like whatever you've got to do to create an atmosphere of worship inside your home, go and do that thing. I don't want the Lord to actively resist me. I want Him to welcome me with open arms. I don't want to miss out. I don't want to be like in the outer courts or even the inner courts. I want to come into the Holy of Holies. I wanna come into that place where my physical body cannot handle the glory and the presence of the Almighty King. You were made to live in union with Him. You were made above everything else, above your career, above your family, above your hobbies. You were made to live in union with the King. You were made to live Him in you and you in Him. This is the life. This is the one thing that Jesus speaks about. One thing, one thing that we would know Him. Paul says, I count it all rubbish. All the accolades, I count it all as rubbish that I might know Him. The greatest thing that I can do as your pastor is set you up to know Him in 2024. All the other stuff, we can work that out. Help us, Jesus. The last two points, giving thanks for everything. This is the opposite of complaining, right? We can all go there. Let's be real. We have a tendency to complain, we all do. But gratefulness and giving thanks that that Lord, this bad diagnosis, I'm not thankful for the sickness, I'm not thankful for the bad news, but I'm thankful that I'm walking through it with a God who can turn all things for good for those that love Him and are called according to His purpose. I'm here to tell you this morning that no matter what you're going through, God didn't send it, but He will use it. Don't, don't, Don't give God credit for what the enemy did. God doesn't send sickness to teach you a lesson to be your teacher. He says the Holy Spirit is your teacher. You don't need sickness to be your teacher. It might be your stupidity that brought it on, bad health choices. It might be a genuine attack from the enemy, but God is not handing out sickness like lollipops, friends. Let me make that clear. (laughs) But He can take your ingredients of life. He can take whatever you're going through. He can take 2023 and all of its ups and all of its downs and all of the mess and all of the financial struggles and all of the relational issues and that child that you've got that's run away from the Lord. He can take your ingredients and He can make something beautiful out of it. And so we give thanks. And so give thanks when we pray. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Pastor, I'm just trying to discern God's will for my life. It's to give thanks. I don't know what God wants me to do. You know, I'm praying and fasting. I'm just trying to get a word from the Lord about what's going on in 2024. His will for you is to give thanks. It's to wake up in the morning and say, thank you, Father, for breath in my lungs. Thank you, Father, that I've got two eyes, a nose, two ears. Thank you, Lord, 
that I live in Aotearoa, New Zealand, where I can go to a light switch, flick it, and lights come on and open up a tap and clean, clean, fresh running water comes out. Thank You, Father, that You sent Your Son for me. Thank You for my family and my friends. Thank You, Lord, that I'm safe. Thank You, Lord, that You that that I can see. Thank You, Lord, that I can hear. Thank You, Lord, that without You, none of this is possible. It's an attitude of, of thankfulness. And if you take this into your prayer life, it makes praying a lot easier and a lot more successful. Let me give an example. If you're a parent here and you're going to pray for your kids, instead of praying, Father, I pray, please, would You cover them in the blood of Jesus? Would You please protect them, Lord? It's a great prayer, but I'll tell you a better way to pray. Father, I thank You that the blood of Jesus protects them and washes them clean. I thank You that no weapon formed against them will prosper. I thank You that there are angels in front of them, behind them, their their front guard, their rear guard, beside them. I thank You, God, that You have a plan for their life. I thank You, Lord, that no matter how far they run, they can't run from Your presence. I thank You, Lord, that You are not gonna let go of this child. If I'm sick, Father, I thank You that by Your stripes I'm healed. Father, why aren't you healing me? No, 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 thank you that by your stripes. I'm telling you, some of you are sitting under things that you should be over and it's just because of the lack of thankfulness. Can I go there this morning? Can I teach us? Like we've got to be, I'm I'm preaching to myself. Thankful. Lord, the situation sucks, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn from it. I'm gonna learn something in it. I'm gonna get closer to You in it. I thank You, Lord, that 2024 may be up, down, left, right, wherever it goes, but I'm thank you, thankful that You said You'll never leave me nor forsake me. I, I can do all things through Christ. It gives me strength. Thankfulness will get us into the presence of the Lord. And here's the last one, which we probably don't like, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. That sounds all a little bit legalistic. Submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. Mutual submission. Why can't my kids do this? Like you chose the last show last Thursday. So now it's my turn. They're brawling. We're trying to have a sleep in. It's like World War Three. You had half a, why did my sister have half a Pringle more than me? (laughs) Can't you just submit to each other? How do you put your little carnal bodies, can you figure this thing out? Put yourself second. It's a little bit hard at that age, isn't it? But mutual submission. This is why church is so important. Because when we're Lone Rangers, and I know I'm preaching to to the choir here because you're in church, right? Maybe for those of you that are online, you need to hear this. But we, we are built for community. You know, we were dealing with some trauma issues with some people recently and, and um, found out that from psychologists, worldly psychologists, they say this, that guilt and shame <coughs> is like taking a, a, a vase and breaking it. And it's kind of in like big pieces and you can put it together. But trauma deep trauma is like a pile of rocks and you smash that vase and it goes into a million pieces. And you know what the worldly psychologists will say? You know what they say? They say that the only way to fully heal trauma is in a community of people where they all come together and pick up a piece each and help that person bring it together. They can't do it on their own. And so the church community, whether we like everybody in this room or not, (laughs) is about us picking up those pieces for each other, coming together and actually healing the trauma and the hurt so that we can freely worship the Lord and freely serve Him. You need people in your life. I need people in my life that are gonna say, red light. Because you know, in this individualistic world where we, we, how many know we, we hear God wrong sometimes? Yeah, all of us. Like we think we've heard God and it's, it's not right. And so people all the time in church life come to us as pastors and make big life decisions and say, God said on the front of it. Whereas the church community is actually, if you th- think about the Jews and any other really Eastern community, they, they, they understand 
bringing a word or bringing an idea or a plan before the community and seeing if everybody agrees with it. And so we don't like that because it's like, well, I hear God and I'm just gonna. But what if we lived like with a bit of a traffic light system, whereas God tells me to do something and I come to you, I come to Brother Barry over here and he's like, man, I don't, I don't even think, uh, if he's a good friend, he'll, he won't just go, yeah, 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 when he knows it's like <laughs> red light. A few people say red light. What happens when I've got a green light and somebody else has got a red light? Orange light, which means slow down. Don't go making rash decisions. If the community of believers that God has put around you are disagreeing. Now that's where we've got to be big enough to disagree, right? And actually love each other. Sometimes you think it's a red light and we need to give you the encouragement. Come on, it's green, let's go. Let's go, take that territory, go for that thing. It works both ways. And so mutual submission means, this is in a marriage, right? This is just before the verse where it says, wives, obey your husbands, submit to your husbands. And all the men are like, yeah. But actually the first verse is submit to one another in the fear of God. Because I fear God, I'm gonna put myself under you and you put yourself under me and I put myself under you and you put yourself under me and I put you first and you put me first and I put you first. Ah, sounds like Christianity. Where we put each other first, eh? That, why is that there? When He's explaining to us a lifestyle of how to access the presence of God. When we don't submit to one another, we lose out on accessing the presence. I wanna be a person who gives thanks for everything, submits to one another in the fear of God. I wanna be a person who speaks to myself in Psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. I'm telling you, if we can be these people, things will shift in our lives. Things will shift, friends. Can we sing that song? I, I, I want this song because it's I cast my mind. We've come in here this morning with all kinds of stuff going on. But the Bible says to take authority over your mind. And sometimes when you don't, it's hard, right? If, if I'm honest, it's hard when I'm not feeling spiritual. I'm not feeling like I wanna pray. I don't wanna worship. I've gotta cast my mind. I've, I've gotta take it and I've gotta put it on the cross. I'll turn the pads up a little bit. And so let's sing this. Let's see what the Lord does for the next 10 minutes as we close this up. And I'd love you to jump into that place, jump into that space of the presence of God. We love you, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Mante, fite, sampo, caria. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree I cast I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my savior on that cursed tree his body bound his body bound and drenched in tears if we get the they band up laid him down in Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah stood and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name for. Let's go back to I cast. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. 
I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah stood and all alone. Come on, let's see what the Lord will do with every person singing. I want to open up the altar. If you want to come and worship Jesus, oh, come and fill this place. Give Him all the praise. thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that in your presence, more things are possible, Lord, than in our own efforts. Lord, we don't wanna live a minute without you. Lord, like Moses said, if your presence doesn't go, we don't wanna go. Lord, you're everything to us. In this moment in your presence, Lord, heal bodies, 
mend broken hearts. Lord, do in Your presence what only You can do. It goes above our preaching, it goes above our singing, it goes above our worship. Lord, let something supernatural happen in the hearts of Your people this morning. Everything that you need, it's found in Jesus. Everything that you need, it's found in Jesus. Everything that you need, it's found in Jesus. Just begin to sing in the spirit room. presence of Jesus that we're speaking about this morning. So you can't separate His presence from Him. He is His presence. It's not like some extra cream on the cake. The presence of a person is the person. And so this Jesus that we're speaking about this morning, you might not have ever given your life to Him. You don't know why these people are getting so excited, raising their hands, screaming, singing. How can they get so excited about a person they can't see? Friend, when I was 22 years old, somebody presented me the Gospel of Jesus Christ and I'd heard it for the first time. And I gave my life to Jesus and I've never been the same again. You might find yourself here this morning without God, without peace, without life. The Bible says, He who has the Son has life and you're struggling, you're, you're, you're trying to put your own life together, but friend, it'll never work. You'll always come back around to the same spot in the same circle. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. He came and He died on a cross. He took upon the punishment for your sin and my sin, everything that we've ever done wrong, everything that was ever done wrong to us. And He took the punishment for those things so that you might enter into a relationship with the Father. If you are here this morning and you don't know Jesus or you once gave your life to Him, but you're not walking with Him now, I'm telling you, you are here not by coincidence or chance. The person that invited you, that's just God orchestrating you to be right here, right now in this moment so that you can reconnect with your Maker. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm gonna ask you to be really brave. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand just so I can see it and then pop it back down and we're gonna pray. And if you pray this prayer with honesty and sincerity in your heart and you really turn away from your old life, you will be moved, what the Bible says, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And so with every head bowed, every eye closed, if that's you, say, Adam, I'm, I'm coming to the Lord. On the count of three, would you pop up your hand real quick so I can see it? One, He loves you. Two, He sent His Son Jesus to die for you. Three, 
you're here for this moment because He wants a relationship with you. Is there anyone? Just pop your hand up real quick. One, two, God bless you, God bless you. Three, who else? Four, who else is there? Who else is there? This is awesome, four people. Who else is there? Five, God bless you. Six, incredible, incredible. Come on, there's more people. There's more people. You said 2024 is the best thing you could do is surrender your life to Jesus. The best thing you could do is surrender your life to Jesus. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And like my life changed 15 years ago, yours can too. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that all of heaven is throwing a party right now for those six people. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, let's just say this prayer all together. And if you are one of those six, say this prayer together. Dear Lord Jesus, today I give my life to You. I surrender it all. Take all of the hurt, all the pain. I thank You that You died on the cross and You rose again on the third day. Today I choose to give my life to You. Today I choose to follow You all the days of my life. God is my Father. Heaven is my home. And I'll serve You all the days of my life. In Jesus' Name we pray. Amen. Can we give it up for those people? So incredible. Hey, if you brought one of those people, 95% of the time somebody brings someone to church, I want you to bring them to the front and the team here is gonna pray with them and we're gonna give them a Bible and we're gonna help them on this journey with Jesus, okay? It's the most important thing that we could do with a new believer. And so if that is you and you came with someone or you came by yourself and you're, you're brave enough, why don't you come to the front as we continue to sing? We're not gonna like hand you the mic or anything, but what we'll do is we're just gonna continue to sing and celebrate our God. And we wanna celebrate that decision that you've made. Hallelujah. Well, as we close and bring it to an end, I really pray. Can we give it up for these people coming forward? God bless you, brother. Tony, if you can help these people, that would be awesome. Oh, that's what it's all about. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, as we bring this to a close and we sing the chorus one more time, there will be a prayer team up the front here. If you need prayer, you want hands laid on you, healing, deliverance. You need somebody to agree with you for a miracle in your life. Make sure you come up the front here and get prayer from the prayer team. Um, we just thank you for being you. We're glad to be back in 2024 and we're believing that it's gonna be an incredible year. We're believing corporately and individually as a leadership team, we're believing for you that you're gonna have a year close with Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's sing.